regular expressions were created long before we started using them with computers. As far back as the 1940s, people drew state diagrams to design low memory systems. Algorithms that transition from one state to another in response to some input. In 1951, along came a mathematician, Stephen Claney, who wanted a notation that was easier to write down to describe the behavior of such systems. I'll use a simple system to demonstrate. The definition of a heat wave varies based on location. We'll use New York City, where at least three consecutive days of 90 plus degree weather indicates a heat wave. Let's say that the daily high temperatures actually reached these forecasted numbers. How could a low memory system determine if a heat wave occurred this week? First, we could simplify the input by assigning a zero to days that did not reach 90 degrees and a one to days that did. A state diagram begins with a start state. If the first number in our input string is zero, we won't change state. Our second number is also zero, so our state remains the same. Our third number is a one, so we transition to the second state, which indicates we had a 90 plus degree day. Our fourth number is one, so we transition to the next state, but had it been zero, we would go back to the start state. Our fifth number is one, so we transition to the next state indicating we had three consecutive 90 plus degree days. Had it been a zero, we would have gone back to the start state. Since we're in the final state, any remaining input values will not change our state. Even though the last two temperatures were below 90 degrees, we've already determined that we had a heat wave earlier in the week. Now let's see how Dr. Claney simplified this process. In his 100 page research paper, he made points like this several times. As the present paper is only a working paper, we welcome suggestions as to improvements in the terminology. And when he first used the word regular, he reiterated, we would welcome any suggestions as to a more descriptive term. He obviously didn't get any better suggestions because when his paper was published in this book, he doubled down on the use of the word regular and coined two more terms, regular expressions and regular sets. Modern discrete math textbooks are filled with related regular words like regular language and regular grammar. So the next time someone asks for suggestions, speak up. We could have had a much better name than regular expression. Let's look at the mathematical notation for regular expressions before they were implemented in software. Sigma represents the set of symbols in our input alphabet. A string is a sequence of symbols from sigma. Sigma star is the set of all possible strings over our alphabet. This includes the empty string, so sigma star could have zero elements. Using this notation, sigma star 111 sigma star represents all strings that contain the substring 111. This regular expression is a compact form of our heat wave state diagram. Every string the diagram recognizes as a heat wave, the regular expression recognizes it too. But even though they're equivalent, regular expressions are more easily programmable. Nearly two decades after Claney's first publication on the subject, computer scientist Ken Thompson published a paper to describe the first implementation of regular expressions in software. Thompson implemented regular expressions the year before he created Unix with Dennis Ritchie. Ken embedded his regular expression algorithm into a text editor. Back then, he used symbols that we still use today. The caret for the starting position, dollar sign for the ending position, matching a single character within the brackets, matching a single character not within the brackets. The asterisk derived from Claney's star matches the previous character zero or more times. The vertical bar for a Boolean or, 
and parentheses to define a group. Instead of using sigma, he used the dot as a wildcard to match any character. So his implementation of sigma star 111 sigma star was dot star 111 dot star. Now let's look at how Snowflake implements regular expressions via six functions that use matching logic on columns that contain string values. You use rlike to see if a pattern matches a string. I'll use this small Snowflake table to demonstrate the six functions. rlike is similar to SQL's like operator, but it enables you to specify a more complex pattern via a regular expression. Here I asked for the column values that match a valid email address pattern. This is the one function where a pattern always represents an entire string. For the other five functions, a pattern can match a subset of a string. The inString function will give you the position inside a string where a pattern begins. Here I'm asking for the start position of names that begin with a capital letter A. The substring function returns one occurrence of a pattern. Instead of asking for the start position of a pattern, I'm asking for the actual names that begin with a capital letter A. Substring all returns all occurrences of a pattern. Here I'm asking for alphabetic substrings and each one is returned inside an array. The count function tells you how many times a pattern occurs. So instead of returning the value of each substring, it simply provides a count of them. The last function returns the string with pattern occurrences replaced by another value. Like here, where I essentially masked each number within each password. Now we'll look at the important details of Snowflake's regular expression implementation. You can avoid escaping backslashes, single quotes, and new lines by putting your regular expression between pairs of dollar signs rather than between single quotes. For example, instead of using this regular expression, which contains 21 backslashes, you can use this equivalent regular expression which only has seven backslashes. The POSIX family of standards for maintaining compatibility between operating systems specifies both basic and extended syntaxes for regular expressions, and Snowflake supports both. The basic meta characters include all those originally defined by Ken Thompson 55 years ago, except for the vertical bar, which is in the extended standard. BASIC also includes a back reference syntax to enable accessing a certain group. And BASIC includes the curly brackets quantifier to match the preceding element a certain number of times. Speaking of quantifiers, the BASIC standard includes the asterisk and the extended syntax adds two more unary operators. Both the asterisk and question mark make the preceding character optional since their ranges begin at zero. Whereas the plus sign indicates the preceding character is required at least once. Snowflake also supports the POSIX named character classes, like ones I've shown previously. Here are the more useful classes. In many programming languages, these are the characters that may be used in identifier names. So there's a word class. There are five classes which are subsets of the word class. The notable thing to mention here is that the space class contains several characters beyond space and tab, with the most useful one being newline. The Perl programming language defines many backslash sequences, and some are supported by Snowflake. Two of the more well-known sequences are backslash T for a tab and backslash N for a new line. There are backslash sequences which are equivalent to three of the named character classes. To select the inverse of these three backslash sequences, simply use uppercase letters. 
and the backslash B enables you to perform whole words only searches, like this example where I want to find only the word port. The last thing I'll mention is that the regular expression functions support an optional parameters argument, with the most commonly used being the letter I, which enables case insensitive matching. Here's an example. The default behavior is case sensitive matching, so only the two capitalized substrings are counted. When the I parameter is used, matching is case insensitive, so five substrings are counted. I hope you now have a better appreciation for regular expressions and how they can improve your Snowflake queries.